pelvis, pelvic floor, vagina, vulva. These are terms that are becoming increasingly popular in mainstream media and marketing products. Do you stop to think? I'm not even sure I know much about those terms. Can you remember the last time that you learned about female anatomy? Was it in your high school sex education class? Or was it a late night chat with friends over wine? I'm Dr. Melissa, pelvic floor physical therapist at Revitalize Physical Therapy. Join me today as we explore the basics, female anatomy 101. First, we're gonna talk about the bony anatomy. I'm gonna point out a few bony landmarks. The first one that is important is the front portion here, and this is the pubic symphysis. The next important structure is your sacrum, and that extends up to your spine. The third area that is important are these two little pockets right here, and that is where your femur attaches. And lastly, you have these two bony structures on the bottom, and that is your ischial tuberosity, and a lot of times people call these your sitz bones. It's important to understand the bony pelvis because this is where you have all of the muscles, the ligaments, and tendons. These structures make everything really strong and supportive. Some of the attachments that are really important, um, your abdominals attach right down in here near that pubic symphysis. You have your back muscles that attach near the spine and sacrum. You also have the main area of your pelvic floor attaching right in through this bowl here. And then you have hip muscles. Um, some of them start in the pelvic floor and then they attach out to your hip. So that can be really important um, when you might be suffering from back pain or hip pain. Um, you can understand a little bit better due to all the attachments. It's also important to understand that this might feel like a small area, but it's actually very complex and it has a lot of different connections. If there is one area that is either weak or tight or doesn't have a great coordination pattern, then this can create dysfunction within the whole system. If you feel like you might have imbalance in the system, this can create symptoms such as pain, um, bladder symptoms, or bowel symptoms. If you're concerned with having pelvic floor dysfunction, click the link above to our video on the top 10 signs of pelvic floor dysfunction. Next, we're gonna move on to the muscles of the pelvic floor. There are actually three different layers. The first and second layer are actually really important in sexual function and then also sphincter function. Um, so opening and closing uh, for bladder and bowel functions. The first layer, um, we have terms of vulva and vagina. Um, so the vagina is actually more of a canal or an opening, and the vulva are some of these outer structures um, that surround the openings. You also have a section right in through here called the perineal body, and that is tissue that connects the vagina opening to the rectal opening. And then lastly on your superficial layer is that rectal opening that we see right here. The second layer of the pelvic floor is assessed a little bit further internally. Layer two, you may notice symptoms of urgency and frequency. This can be assessed and addressed up and through this region of the pelvic floor. Also in layer two, you have a muscle that is deep to this most superficial muscle right here. That sometimes can be affected um, with birth trauma, birth tear, or episiotomy. So a lot of times we'll do manual therapy to the superficial layer and then also the deeper layer so that you no longer have symptoms, likely pain. The third layer of the pelvic floor is what we call your support layer or your sling layer. So this would be all of these red structures that you notice here. This is all muscular structures. And then you can also notice them on the back side. In here, you also house um, your organ structures, so your bladder, your rectum, and your uterus. These muscles also do the lifting motion um, of a pelvic floor contraction, so we would assess this as well at the third layer. As mentioned before, you also have pelvic floor muscles that are housed inside the pelvic floor and then extend out to the hip. So if you're struggling with hip pain, we may need to assess the pelvic floor to see if the tissues are restricted in the pelvic floor and not just in the outer structures of what you would consider your hip. So this was a quick overview of pelvic floor anatomy including the bony structures and the muscular layers. 
The pelvic floor plays um, a major role in a few really important events in a female's life. So that can be menstruation, pregnancy, and menopause. The structures that we discussed today can all be impacted in these different life events. If you're experiencing any concerns related to these topics and want to learn more, click the link below to our free guides. If you'd like to learn more about your pelvic floor, please subscribe as we post videos like this often. If you like this video, please comment below or click the like button. Thanks for watching me today. Have a great day.